Greetings, voyagers. Well, I'm hard at work inside the van again. I'm figuring out, I'm building a storage space over here because I already know the 12-volt the, um, refrigerator I'm going to buy. I already have the dimensions and I know it's going to fit right in there. But it leaves an awkward corner back here, so I'm building shelving, and I have to, of course, build it around the gas filler. And uh, you got to have a plan. Everything's got to come with a plan, or you never get anywhere. Uh, I use this graph paper, and I, this was easy because it's a small scale. One square equals one inch. So there we go. And uh, I'm going to need a few compartments here. This, and I'll have to see if I need to do some contours around that uh, filler, gas filler. This is going to be the base plate. That is going to fit right in there. And there'll be just a quarter inch of space between this and the refrigerator. That refrigerator is going to have to roll forward. I'm going to put it on casters or sliders or something. I'll figure that out. But it's going to have to pull out so you can open the lid, reach in and get what you want, close it. And push it back in, slide it back in. So, yeah, I had to make a template with uh, paper, craft paper, and then transfer, uh, transfer it to this panel. Now, I'm using two foot by four foot sandy plywood. That's spelled S A N D E. And when I first started seeing it, like at Home Depot, I thought maybe they meant sanded, and it's just a typo that they left off the last D. But no, S-A-N-D-E is the name of this particular type of plywood. And uh, professionals don't use it for finished work because it's cheap. Um, it's not the best quality, but it is sanded both sides. So it's got a good finish on both sides if you want to, you know, dress it up a bit or whatever. And it was less expensive than the half inch sanded one side um, brand. So yeah, it was like about five bucks a panel less. So I, I'm using it for the first time and uh, it's, it's pretty easy to work with. It's a pretty soft wood. It cuts easily uh, and um, it may split you know, the plies may split down there like that, but this isn't going to be shown. This isn't going to be visible. Now, I have this bracket here that is attaching this partition to the floor. So, that was blocking this wood on uh, this panel from butting up against the wall. And, because this also has depth, I had to... Uh, channel out in here I just used my circular saw I just measured out where it was going to be and how deep it had to go and everything I think I used a 1 8 inch uh, depth on the blade and just made multiple cuts and multiple cuts and then you can move the blade sideways and all that stuff just chips right out of there so now it fits snug up against the wall and snug against the floor because with that raised up on that uh, bottom half of that bracket and the screw head this was not sitting flat on the floor so now it is and then these panels these panels that's the one I mentioned These panels are going to go in here like this. And I'm going to have three of them. I'm going to have three compartments. One here. Another one there. 
and then I'm on down here and I may have to do some contour cutting around there it'll be pretty rough but anyway so that's my next project it's almost finished I got a nice space here for my frying pan I built everything to to fit the dimensions of my equipment this is the new Come on, which it's stuck on. Oh, it's stuck on something. Anyway. This is my new stove. I'm not sure if I'm going to take this on our winter trip to the desert because it uses propane and what I don't want to do is have another large propane tank I'm certainly not going to try to fit a 20 pound tank inside the van it's just too big takes up too much space um, there are smaller tanks but you know if we're going to be in the desert in the winter time, we're not going to need heat. All I'm going to be using propane for is the little amount of cooking we do and heating water if we need to shower in our shower tent. So I might, I might take the, um, I have a butane camp stove which um, uses those little butane canisters. And I can fit those one pound green propane bottles in the van. Uh, I'll bring the heater just in case. It's going to take about six or seven days to get out to the warm weather, so we may need the heater. But we're not going to use that much propane. I don't want to put a big tank in here. So I may just, for cooking and heating water, I might just bring my butane stove. But we'll see. But either one of them will fit into this space. And I like the flat profile of this. I had been cooking with the little backpackers stove that screws onto the top of a one pound bottle but it's kind of top heavy and tippy and I, I never felt safe about it I wanted something more flat so that's flat and my uh, butane stove is flat but I'm going to bring the little backpacker stove with us just as a backup so there's my frying pan Do this one handed. Here's the frying pan. This is my stove. In this compartment, I'll be able to fit a couple of saucepans. I'm going to put my battery, my new uh, GoLab battery, in this space here because it's going to power the refrigerator, which is going right there. I used shellac this time instead of a stain and polyurethane because I'd never used shellac before. And I saw on uh, over on Adventure Van Man, Brian used shellac to do his desk and I just like the look of it I like the amber color so I tried it this is another shelf that's gonna go right in there I gotta make use of every bit of space you can so that's gonna go in there I have to put some uh, I have to attach some corner braces to it to support it over on this wall here and uh, yeah it's coming together looking pretty good now the problem with this shellac is 
It's difficult to use. It's a very thin liquid and it splashes all over. And it also dries very quickly. It dries and hardens very quickly. So if you lay some down and then you want to go back and brush over it and it's, it's, it, it might be in a semi solid condition, you know, like real gummy and stuff. And it doesn't, doesn't take a, a brush too well after you've put it down. So it was a little difficult to use, a little sloppy. But I like it. I like the look of it. One coat will be enough. And here, I screwed the whole assembly down to the floor so it won't slide around. Now, the half inch plywood is not thick enough to take even a small screw. Even a small screw will poke through to the other side and then you have a very sharp point on the other side that's gonna scratch and cut, make you bleed, scratch up all your stuff. So it's difficult to use, but I didn't wanna go with three quarter inch all over because it's just bulky. So how I'm securing these pieces together is by drilling through and and driving a screw into the wood the into the uh, plywood that way so it requires a lot of careful setting up to get these things to line up because it's not there's not a whole lot of room there for error if you miss you could end up splitting if you don't drive that screw in dead center you might split the wood so it was very tricky but that's how I did it all these panels are secured together by screws going through the wood from the edges and it's sturdy and strong I mean I could pull this thing out if I took that screw out down there and unscrewed it from the floor I could pull this whole thing out in one piece and, uh, and it's it's rigid and strong so it worked out pretty well pretty happy with that I will be ordering the refrigerator soon probably within the next month or so I'll have that in it's August 13th it's Friday the 13th today and uh, it's hot it's 92 degrees and it's very humid I'm going to go back in the house real soon because I'm starting to sweat just sitting here. So there's that. I finally managed to organize this very awkward corner down here. And I got lots of nice cubby space there for things. So that's good. I'm starting to put stuff back into the van now. And that's a wrap for today. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Cannabis. Sativa.